If you're watching this, then I'm hopeful that you already believe in the value of a liberal arts education, an education whose mission is to support the development of the flexible mind. This flexibility comes by way of engaging in conversations across multiple academic disciplines. In all areas, the people who are leaders are the ones who can see beyond and outside of their own fields, and so are better able to comprehend and contribute to the world at large. It is in the nature of the arts in general, and dance specifically, to integrate creative and critical thinking from many perspectives. Every discipline, is looking to answer life's questions through their own methodology. And the artist must sort through many different systems of inquiry and find new and dynamic ways to express ideas. The dancer's working landscape includes anatomy, physics, history, philosophy, religion, politics, human rights, and all of the other art forms. At Bard, the dancers pursue these areas formally and bring any knowledge gained to the work of building an independent, creative voice. Dancers don't just store these ideas in their minds. They process and question and create new meaning with their bodies. I don't think it gets any more practical than that. If there's one thing that I've learned since teaching at Bard, it's that few things are as important in shaping and defining our world as stories. Who tells them? And perhaps more importantly, how are they told? Here at Bard, what we do in the Written Arts program sits at the intersection of nearly every academic discipline. Our students are not only novelists, short story writers, poets, they are also chemists, biologists, psychologists. Students who are interested in integrating their work as writers into nearly every academic and intellectual discipline the college provides. We think of writing not only as a creative practice, but as a form of engagement, one that allows us to see the world in the most complex light possible and to respond in kind with our own distinct stories. There's a long and healthy tradition here at Bard uh, of supporting work done by artists and practitioners that deals directly with questions of human rights, of politics, of space, and so on. Um, one thinks of work that deals directly with questions like resource extraction and indigenous resistance, of questions of climate change, of forms of state violence and oppression, of identity and racial justice. Um, and building on this tradition more recently, the schools initiated a new uh, master program called the Center for Human Rights and the Arts, which will be starting this year, which of course directly engages these two sides uh, more directly. Uh, in addition to that, uh, the architecture program, which began last year, is focusing its pedagogy also around questions of politics, power, space, and, and the built environment. Uh, one tends to think of architecture as a practice that's devoted to designing and building um, large, fancy buildings or public spaces. Um, but indeed, the field is really changing um, more recently, uh, really trying to address questions that it's always entangled with but hasn't in the past uh, paid this so much attention to. So questions like climate change, housing justice, forms of displacement, um, gentrification, uh, the disappearance of the public realm, and so on. And so we're really excited to be able to do that uh, and to build this program from the ground up around these kinds of questions. The most exciting thing about teaching the arts in a liberal arts context is we get to see how the arts are all interconnected. We don't teach them as completely separate disciplines. If you're a film student, then we also really encourage you to take studio arts classes, theatre and performance classes, and so on, and really to start to think about the arts as operating on a continuum. And it's not just within the arts either. Here at Bard, uh, we love to see the way that the arts resonate with all of the other subjects that you're studying. This semester, for instance, we're running a multidisciplinary course on real and imaginary spaces, which I'm teaching together with an art historian, a professor of literature, and a visual artist, giving our students a completely cross-disciplinary approach to the study of the imagination in the arts. When students come to Bard and take intro classes, they'll, they might take a painting or a drawing class, uh, and those classes are really observational classes, where they are learning the basics of the medium, but they are doing it through looking at actual things in the world. 
Um, so they'll be working with still lifes or the model. Um, and then we'll go on to uh, use it doing more kind of imaginative projects. Um, in sculpture, they will be, exp they will be um, introduced to different mediums such as the metal shop and the wood shop, which is where we are right now, um, and uh, basic casting, as well as working with different kinds of like found materials. Um, and with those, you know, in those classes, they might be given a prompt which will then give them a way to kind of like imagine a way to kind of respond visually to the idea. Studio arts students, what they are doing is developing a way to communicate visually. And that's a great skill. It's also a gift. And I think that what, at, what students at Bard do is they find ways to kind of meld together their various interests to form like a way of working that enables them to realize these gifts. I had um, an art student who told me that she was thinking about going into business school, but chose art. And I said, you know, why? And she said, in art school, you get to kind of problem solve creatively. I've always really thought about that answer because I think it's really amazing to think about how someone th could think about art making as a, as a way to uh, solve problems creatively. And I think that that idea of creative problem solving is something that goes beyond just art. It's something that you can extend to other ways of like thinking and working in the world. But doing it through the medium of visual art is really important because you're actually translating the ideas and the words and the texts that you are kind of absorbing into uh, some, another kind of medium, another way of expression.